traveling beneath a human guise. The threat to my person is lessened and much information can be gleaned. However, the illusion is flimsy and any act of aggression on my part can break the spell. All right, it's a good thing I was recording there actually because uh, I was just making my way back to Vassarbrund and I popped in this tent by accident and uh, managed to find this human attire. So I'm guessing now they won't attack me. All right, I can't seem to talk to these people, but that's fine. Hey, this is actually pretty cool. I knew you. I knew you get the human um, thing. I just didn't know where. You know, that kind of caught me by surprise. And I completely went there by accident. I was. I was going to start the episode here. Oh my freaking god! Oh my god! Yeah, I was just going to start the episode here and be like, "Hey guys, we're back where we were," rather than showing. Like the whole journey up. The blood of ages flows so oh, sweet. <laughs> Just randomly come across a fountain of time. What's this one gonna give me then? Your magic energy recovers more quickly for our blood enhances. Sweet, I'll take that. Oh my god, look at how many freaking items. Rolling in it. Look how many items I've got. Too many. They have shields, so they didn't work. Years ago, word reached us of a strange pestilence that had laid siege to a few remote villages far east. But the rumors failed to prepare us for the horror that was the plague. Worms and maggots fed upon his festering skin. The scent of tainted blood seeped through the wounds upon which they feasted. Pity. Such a waste. Good blood gone bad. Corhagen, my home. The He's becoming a good city vampire now. Osgoth, Drinking blood and, and feeling bad for the waste of it. Delusions as to the welcome I would receive. I'm sorry, my mouse. Uh, my cat just clicked on the mouse and skipped the dialogue. <laughs> uh, she's cute though, so at least she gets that. Good thing is we have subtitles. Death and disease. Stalked these streets. Bodies lay most in the very spots in which fate had taken them. A perfect homecoming. Oh, lots of dead people. <laughs> Basically, uh, big plague. Big plague is wiped out you know, the town and because of the famine, uh, the bodies are piling up outside and it's presumably causing more problems. I can't remember specifically what town this is. Oh, he did say this was Kurhagen, so this will be, this is Kane's home. Cool. Yeah, I'm not going to waste my time losing health on these people, if it can be avoided. Watson's at me and it's unsettling. Oh my god. Jesus, criminy crackers. That was a bit intense. That was probably the, the most intense run round I've done in ever. Is the sword gonna be better? Is the sword literally only? Uh, sorry, is the mace only good for? Iron sword. Do you equip? <laughs> equip it. There we are. Is the mace only good for opening boxes and stuff? Because 
I'll kick him out with a sword if I need to. Oh my freaking god. Try to freaking heal with her. You, these the magic guys are ridiculous, honestly. I think that the range of my actual magic is better. Didn't need to kill her. Fine. Hey, we're getting uh we're getting a fair amount of skills here actually. Drink his blood, please. Is this guy still alive down here? Yes. Invoking this spell cloaks me under a protective aegis. Whatever spell is cast at me will be reflected back at the caster, leaving me unharmed. It will only last for a short time, however, before leaving me vulnerable once more. This whole area is just ridiculous. <laughs> this is what I was talking about earlier, the area that's just brutal. Thing. So now we've got the protective cloak. Uh, have I been in here? Oh, that's a lot of dead people. All right, we've got items, we've got dead people, we've got bars. We've got protective cloaks now as a magic spell. Um, I think we're, we're building up a fairly decent, strong, you know, foundation of a character here. Oh, this is a, a charge for the save point. Charge for the save point is always good. Oh, terrifying though, because it means I'm probably have to gonna, gonna have to fight something. Oh, I, I know that image. That image means that this is the dungeon of the bone armor. It's going to change the look of our cane and also give us more defense. But some of the enemies in this game suck. <laughs> it's kind of cool that some of the floor tiles are like, you know, icy, sort of slidey. A little bit annoying in practice when you're actually trying to do things, but at least it varies up the gameplay a little bit. So that's it's kind of cool. I guess it's a bit more annoying than anything else, but it's something, you know. I love how these dungeons purely exist. Or sorry, like these people are chained in just random dungeons purely just to give you health. And that's fine for me, because I need help. It's one of those weird video game things where uh, everything exists for the... Oh, shit. I didn't mean that. Everything exists for the, uh, the main character, even if it doesn't make any freaking sense. Correct. You can see that this protective shield only works for projectiles. Doesn't work for people who are trying to hit me with swords and stuff. I think, anyway, as far as I'm aware, uh, it only works for ranged.
Oh, it takes up so much magic. Holy shit. I didn't realize that. I've wasted too much time already. The projectiles, I think, are probably... Mm, actually, yeah, the projectiles are easily the worst part of this game. Fuck oh, me. Like, you know what? I'm probably never going to get anywhere near as X Games as that just was. I'm I'm cool with that. I'll just li I'll live with that, you know? I'm so glad I caught that video. Well, I, I'll never do that again. I'll <laughs> never ever do that again. And there is the bone armor. Lower forms of undead fall swiftly to deception. With the bone armor, they are not as eager to challenge me. Oh, so there's actual use for it as well. I didn't realize that. Bone armor. So, with the bone armor, undead are less likely to attack me or something? That's pretty cool. I instantly get hit by an undead. Yeah, these guys aren't charging me anymore. I guess I can still aggro them, but they won't, they won't charge me. Gun. I need that help upgrade, so I'm gonna have to somehow figure out how I'm gonna do that. talking much I just I just get into it you know I'm just like focusing and it's because it's quite a, for me it's a hard game you know I don't really do well with these types of games um and that I mean like kind of like 2d old RPGs I really struggle with them so uh oh my god I really struggle with them, so I really like to focus and, you know, no word of a lie, basically just try hard my way through this, you know? The Heart of Darkness. We've got lots of heals, so that's not too much of an issue, but... That sucks. And it gives me like loads of heals right through here as well. So if I just maybe slowed down, focus on what I was supposed to be doing, it would have been fine. But no. Right, so we've got the bone armor. Good. Right, so we can get through here now. We've got nuke, we've got a mace, we've got bone armor, we've got dead people. We've got loads of items, like Way too many items. This cleanses my body of any dangerous poisons. 
Quite useful with all the filth I find myself surrounded by. These are weird kind of ghost spirit characters. I don't really know what the purpose of them are. They literally just look like they're kind of grabbing. Another reason I wanted to get the PC version was um, load times. So I'm, I maybe haven't explained this. PlayStation 1 version has way too many load times. Uh, load times when you uh, pause the menu, load times for dialogue sometimes, uh, load times for cutscenes, and frankly it's not ideal. Um, so the PC version doesn't have that. Unfortunately though, the PC version technically I guess is inferior to the PS1 version. In some respects, anyway, I think I think graphically it looks better. Um, but there's also, you know, I think the sound files aren't as good or something. I don't know. But basically, I'm running the PC version and I got a mod that kind of injects a lot of the PS1 stuff back in. So, I guess you could say this is the best version of the game. I think it looks better. The PS1 version has a camera that's like really zoomed in and it just it just zooms constantly. I don't think it's really that appealing. It's, the viewpoint is like it's not quite this close, but it's pretty close. And uh, the camera kind of like it moves around and jutters in the position that you're kind of moving in. A lot of people like that just out of nostalgia. I'm not too keen on it. The Termagent Forest. Inker Hagen. I actually kind of prefer just this, this that camera that kind of follows you out. I think the reason they Malik did that. Sebastian, perched defiantly on the mountaintop, black as night against the blanket of snow. What manner of man would choose a land so harsh and utterly devoid of life? Yeah, I think the reason they kind of did that on the PS1 was just for, you know, memory limitations, memory reasons. There's always some sort of technical reason for having a, a weird ass camera in a PS1 game. Uh, okay, so the only thing we can do now is uh, go back for him. I have no idea where to go. So, I know I'm going to Mount Bastion, but... Hmm. It's weird. It's like back here, but I don't I don't know if there's a way in there. I mean we can have a look. But there's no harm in looking, right? But it's getting to that time. I'll save you the hassle. I'm going to go see if I can find a way into Mount Bastion from this way, but for now, I'm going to end the episode, so thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, then please consider subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next episode of Blood Omen.